Man, we thought all this stuff about how Connor McDavid over the past few years has been ridiculous. How he has been just so nasty and so good that now when we see two performances like these, you start to really realize that the NHL and its overall trend towards point production and goal scoring is getting so big. And I love it. You know, this is a good thing. This is ridiculous, but it's great. Today we are talking about the scoring race because this year, Connor McDavid seems to have been dethroned. Now, maybe it's out of his control. I get it. You know, he started out the season slow and now he's back up in there because... I mean, a lot of the Oilers were just pretty slow at the start of the year, but still, Connor McDavid is not the runaway Art Ross leader for 23-24. That honor belongs to not one, but two guys who are neck and neck in this extremely tight, but extremely pulled ahead race. Now, full disclosure, I'm recording this audio on the morning of Friday, January 26th. So, there are two more games between both of these teams that have yet to happen. On Friday, so today, there's going to be a Colorado Avalanche game, and then on Saturday, there's going to be a Tampa Bay Lightning game. So, by the time this video is up, the numbers may not be all too accurate. However, what I wanted to do was talk about the scoring race between one Nikita Kucherov in Tampa Bay and one Nathan McKinnon in Colorado, because my goodness have both of these guys just been dominant. Starting out with the actual points race itself. At the time of recording this audio, Nikita Kucherov is number one in points with 83 this season. Nikita Kucherov has a one-point lead on second place Nathan McKinnon, and McKinnon has a 13-point lead on third place, who is David Pasternak. To put things into perspective, the gap between Pasternak at number 3 and Sam Reinhardt at number 10 is only 9 points, but the gap from 2 to 3 is 13. My goodness, dude, McKinnon and Kucherov, if one of these guys didn't exist, the other would be the clear runaway winner for the Art Ross, and maybe even the Hart Trophy too. You could very well make the debate that Nathan McKinnon is the front runner for the Hart right now, and it may not even be too close. If you go over to assists, both McKinnon and Kucherov are 1 and 2, in a separate order than the points actually. But it's interesting because after McKinnon and Kucherov, you have three straight defensemen taking up the list on assists. You've got Quinn Hughes, Kale McCarr, and Noah Dobson, followed shortly by Connor McDavid and J.T. Miller. Kucherov and McDavid are also kind of near the top for goals. I mean, Kucherov is third in overall goal scoring. McKinnon is fifth. Kucherov has 32. McKinnon has 30. So that's how the math works out so far. Both of these guys are guaranteed point-per-game players if they miss out on points for the rest of the season. They're already guaranteed to being a point-per-game, but when it comes to the overall projections, I mean, this is where things get nutty. Nikita Kucherov's career high was 128 points, that in which he accomplished in 2018-19. He ran away with the Art Ross that season, and it was not even close. Give it a few years, Kucherov has a few more 80-point seasons in there. He has a 100-point season. He has a zero-point season, actually, in 2020-2021. But he's been so good that this season, he is on pace for 140 points in 81 games played. He's on pace for a 50-goal year, that in which he's never done before. His career high is 41. And he's on pace for 86 assists, which would be one off his career high in 2018-19. And for the most part, the situations between Tampa Bay and Colorado are so different because Nikita Kucherov is pretty much like the only guy doing significant damage on this Lightning squad. I get it, there are some other point producers on this team doing good things. Braden points at 50 points, Victor Hedman's at 47 points, he's a point per game guy. Stamkos is just under a point per game, as is Brandon Hagel. But this top unit really doesn't have much support elsewhere in the lineup. Nikita Kucherov, the entire play of the Tampa Bay Lightning flows through him. And as a guy who plays on the flank, especially on that power play, it's like a guaranteed goal every time Nikita Kucherov has the puck for more than three seconds. Because Kucherov is so good, and because the Lightning have been so subpar everywhere else, you take a look at the NHL standings and you recognize that at the time of recording this audio, their lead on 4th place Toronto and 5th place Detroit is only at most 2 points. They're not running away with the Atlantic Division like we've maybe come to expect over the years, mostly because the rest of their depth just hasn't been showing up. 
But either way, Tampa Bay still has a lot of star power going for them, and almost every second pass, dude. It's Nikita Kucherov on that flank. He is so good, so skilled. His playmaking, his perception, his lackadaisical quality to being able to draw guys in before quickly zipping a pass across. Like, it's just so pristine. And Kucherov is maybe the most cerebral guy to have taken the Art Ross Trophy in the past few years. Now, going over to Mac Daddy. The interesting thing about McKinnon is that before this season, there was never a day that started off with him as the number one point guy in the NHL. That actually happened a few times this season. It's not the case right now at the time of recording this audio, but knowing Nathan McKinnon, he's probably going to get two points later today against the LA Kings and overtake Kucherov once again. But McKinnon and the Colorado Avalanche are in a similar spot, but maybe just a little bit more exacerbated. Because the Colorado Avalanche, they're one of the top teams in the NHL. They are fourth overall in a tie for third place at the time of recording this audio. But the problem with Colorado, everybody's been saying it, they're a one-line team at the moment. They have an entire line's worth of guys that are out and not playing. Valerie Nachushkin, Gabriel Landeskog, Arturi Lekkonen was out for a while, he just recently returned. But with those three guys, that's a whole gosh darn line. The second line on Colorado right now, after that McKinnon, Rontanen, Drouin line, is Miles Wood, Ross Colton, and Logan O'Connor. Now sure, you could say some of these guys have been pulling their weight, but that's Miles Wood, Ross Colton, and Logan O'Connor. Definitely not a Nachushkin, Landeskog-esque pairing. But when it comes to Mac Daddy McKinnon, other than this top line, the Avalanche individually have not really been the best, but they have been getting it done. And this top line has been carrying so hard that every single game, it's like, yeah, Nathan McKinnon gets another three-point effort, McKinnon gets a four-goal game, McKinnon gets two goals to tie it and one to win it in an overtime, like, he has just been a monster. And with Kale McCarr on the back end, nothing is impossible for this Colorado Avalanche team. McKinnon and his point production is pretty similar to Kucherov's. He's on pace for 140 points as well, which would best his career high that he set last year of 111 points. He's on pace to besting his career highs in goals and assists as well. He's on pace for 51 goals and 89 assists. He has just been so good, but the problem with McKinnon is that ever since he ascended to this, like, 100-plus point caliber player, he's never had a full season's worth of play. The last time he had 82 games on a year, he had 99 points, but ever since then, it's been less. Last year, his 111-point season came in 71 games. So if you do the point production there, 111 divided by 71 multiplied out by 82, yeah, he was on base for 128 points, which would have been better than the Kucherov season, but now he's ascended to even higher highs. Even Connor McDavid, if you take a look at the NHL point-producing race, let's go out there and look at 22-23 and 23-24. Different stats for different years. Connor McDavid's point per game in the 2020-2021 season, the season where he got 100 points in 56 games, was the best season only to be matched by McDavid's last year where he got 153 points, and then right after you've got that McKinnon and Kucherov combo. Every other season after that, I mean, it's Crosby, it's Dreisaitl, it's McKinnon from 22-23, but Kucherov and McKinnon are ascending to that level where all of a sudden they're no longer just carrying their teams, but they're carrying the league too. Connor McDavid this season has not had the best year because of that terrible start, but he's slowly gotten himself back up into actually being one of the top guys. It's just he's being held out of the top five right now by JT Miller, Ronson, and Pasternak. So we'll see whether or not the King has actually been dethroned for 23-24, because if there's anybody that could go out there and maybe get like a two-point-per-game stretch over the span of two months, it's Connor McDavid. But for Kucherov and McKinnon, they are right there, neck and neck, as the guys that have taken the reign so far. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How well have McKinnon and Kucherov been playing, in your opinion? Did you expect this kind of a season possible for these two guys? I know because I'm playing off against a guy this week who has McKinnon in fantasy, and it's tearing me up. I'm getting ripped a new one, man. It's so bad. But either way, he's been really good, so I definitely am happy to see that. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this year's scoring race. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishar Shrosnay 9. And... Bye.